My name is William Joseph Lutz. My age is 18. I'm about to be 19. And last year, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder with psychotic features. Now, the medications that I'm on right now are lithium carbonate for mood stabilization, risperdone, which is an antipsychotic, clonopin for anxiety disorder, cogentin for muscle spasms. And to stop the side effects of the other four, I also take Advil and fish oil. Also, I'm about to start metrazapine for my insomnia. I feel pretty good at times, pretty bad at times. I just have to figure it out day by day. I'm really trying to find this perfect balance of medication where it's like, I only need to take a couple pills a day and I'll be fine. But I guess it really doesn't work like that a lot of the time. So I guess I'm just trying to find balance to even the playing field for my depression. But my goals for medication are much different. My goal is to be happy without medication, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. I see that my goals should be years out to be off of medication, not months or weeks, but years. And that is kind of disheartening for me. The filmmaker, my friend, you know, just came to me with this documentary idea because he's doing a documentary for his class and he just said will I really want to do a documentary about you because I think you're an interesting person and I think it help people and help you and I was really um, at mixed feelings and at odds with myself should I do it should I not how do I do this right and he basically just told me just do video journals and when you're feeling sad feeling really happy just record them I'm just thinking about doing these and I'm like what should I say what shouldn't I say basically I had a lot of mixed feelings one thing I really hope is really that I can help people by doing these little video journals. I'll be doing this for the next three months. I really hope I'm not too boring. Anyway, uh, these are the questions for the morning. You know, how do you feel right now? What were your first thoughts when you woke up? What are you going to do today? What time is it? Slash, how long did you sleep for? How did you sleep? Whatever's bro. <laughs> then I can talk about whatever I want. Well, hey, um, I still feel like crap right now. I felt like crap yesterday, so the crap really carried over till today. Um, my first thought when I woke up, uh, it's a really private thought, um, but it was basically like, why didn't I tell this person this? Why didn't I tell this person this? Um, it's sort of the mixture of all of those regrets and like, it really makes me uh, really regret a lot of very important junctions in my life. In order to learn what makes me, me, you guys are going to have to learn a couple things about me. Well, in this corner, I got my drafting table, I got a tripod set up, and uh, the last play that I did, I did uh, lights, if you didn't see that. Lights for the play. They gave me this poster. This really important area right up in here. This is the drama department award. It comes with a $500 scholarship. Not that much, but you know, every bit helps. The director decided to give me this. There's this poster back here. I'm not gonna pull it out for you guys because it's pretty big. It just says, thank you, Will, for all your hard work. Now, this new side of me is guitar. 
I like guitar. I like photography, as you can see. This is my favorite guitar. I love it. Les Paul. Yeah. Crunchy chips and really crunchy carrots. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh five o'clock right now, and I, I just woke up. Um, yeah, that's pretty weird uh, sleep schedule right there. I've slept for thirteen hours. <sighs> I wish this could be like. Not every day. If I could shift this schedule, like push to where I'm like going to sleep at ten, waking up at like eight or nine, I can actually enjoy the day. But instead, it's just sort of like I have to enjoy the night now because it's gonna be dark soon. So yeah, that's pretty much how I feel today. And the wash of feelings is pretty, you know, typical for me. Nom nom nom. I love lithium. I'll take the cogentin next. Nom nom nom. Fish oil. It smells like vanilla. Advil next. I wish for no time. Get in there. Clonopin. There you go. <laughs> you guys probably won't recognize these questions being in there actually because I haven't really used them. I've just been talking about like whatever the fuck I want, you know? Because it's like that's like most important to me, you know? It's like I put stuff in priority over these questions. Now if I go through the questions, it's just gonna sound like the same exact thing every day. If I could do a model of them, I'd be like, how do you feel right now? Okay, I don't know, I just woke up. What were your thoughts when you woke up? I'm awake. <laughs> Again. <laughs> the trick to taking large pills like that in a handful is you tuck one or two of them up in your cheek while you swallow one and then you move it and you swallow the other one. Hmm. Pro tip. <laughs> I really can tell when I've missed a dose because the next day my thoughts get a little darker and uh, clouded, just hazy. So I take these drives like once a month and uh, what it consists of is uh, going by the hospital, park my car in the emergency room parking lot for a little while. This is when I'm feeling really bad. Shit's, shit's gone down and well, sometimes I drive past the hospital. But today I, I parked for a while seeing if I need going or not. Every day is a question for me. It's like, are you going to go into the hospital again? I, I feel like I'm gonna kill myself, but I can second guess myself. And that's what this, the lithium does for me. It's like, it allows me to have that second guess to live for another day. But it's, it's always there, so probably like in a month 
or a couple weeks, or maybe next week, I'm probably going to be driving by the emergency room again. Or I'm probably going to be in a bad spot emotionally to where I would, I'd want to kill myself. You know, if the medications are really working, then I'm glad that I get that second guess. I'm just glad that I know now, since I did that second guess, I'm going to be able to wake up in my own bed, go over and see my own friends again. So it's about four o'clock right now. Um, in the morning, I can't sleep. I've taken the maximum amount of mesotropine um, possible, which is the one I'm taking for insomnia. I've been taking the mesotropine for a week and a half now. My body's definitely gotten used to it, and it's no longer helping me sleep. Sometimes I don't know if I'm actually feeling better or if I think that I should be feeling better, therefore I think I'm feeling better. It's kind of tangled logic right there, but you should be feeling better, therefore are you? I just wonder sometimes if I'm really actually cut out for the world, you know, it's just like... Maybe I really don't belong. It's kind of weird to say, but... Maybe I don't belong. It's... A scary thing to think of, but... I'm always really... There's this underlying layer of me. It's just, um, I don't want to die, you know? It's just like, I don't feel like I'm cut out. I don't feel like I can ever be. Then suicide would be my only option. I just want to talk about rock bottom. So many people have hit rock bottom in their life, whether it's emotionally, drug-induced, other mental illnesses. And hitting rock bottom, it's tricky because you know the only way to get out of rock bottom is up, and it's very difficult trying to move up. Being in rock bottom is being in a tunnel where you see a light, but you aren't sure if it's the exit or a careening train, but you'll never actually know unless you take the steps to see what it is. They don't know like how really close I am to attempting it again. I mean it, I mean suicide. But I guess I'll take life day by day. I guess it's kind of good and bad that I say that in the morning and say that at night. Because when I, I get to realize I've made it through that day, maybe I can make it through the next. Yeah, I really like getting, doing those video documentaries because it's like it's like getting something off my chest, you know? It's like something I never get to talk about. I can talk about it with my close friends because they know. They know that extent of it. But it's like just a random person on the street, you know, mental illness is like a tabooed subject. Yeah, so that's why I kind of like doing them. Just me letting myself out, you know? Depression's a part of me, but it doesn't define me.
hard to believe, so I just wait for you to say goodbye in some way. My